Hello everyone, welcome back to day five of my quarantine food diaries. Today is going to be a little bit different. I am doing a Q&A. Um, a few days ago I asked on Instagram if you guys had any like questions and basically today I'm going to be answering them whether that's about America, long distance, but we're not just going to be answering questions because that would be boring. So I have got one of my meals today which is dumplings. This is what they look like by the way. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have ten dumplings. And they also gave me some ginger and soy sauce which I'm so glad about because I was like, are they going to give me soy sauce? But before we start, shall we try a dumpling? Let's try... Oh, okay, let's try this. I mean, they smell great. Mmm. Um, a little on the drier side. I don't know how much filling is in this. Let's start off with my name. My name is Michelle. When I moved to Australia four years ago at college, I decided to just have a nickname and it was Mish. And since then, um, that has been my nickname and then my Instagram became Hello Mish Jeff. I am 22 years old. I'm born in March. I'm a March baby, so that makes me a Pisces. My family is originally from Hong Kong, um, but I was born and raised in New Zealand. And then, as I said, I moved to Melbourne four years ago to study, and then I was in Seattle for one year. Some of these questions uh, might be kind of out of the blue because they're kind of more questions based around my move to America. Um, so I guess if you're new and you don't know too much background information about me, maybe I'll do another one down the line. But for now, I'm just going to solely answer the questions here or else this is going to be a very long Q&A. Okay, wait, I'm too hungry. I'm just going to have one more. Let's have one more dumpling before we start. Alright, so let's start with the most popular question. How did Tony and I meet? Um, Tony is my boyfriend. He currently lives in Seattle. We met via Instagram um, in October 2018. I was doing a giveaway with a Melbourne cafe. I believe I popped up on his explore feed and so he DM'd me. He literally slid into my DMs and he said, Oh, I wish I could enter this giveaway. And then I just replied back because I think I was following him and I, I liked his stories. So I responded saying, Oh, you wish you could. And then after that, we just started talking a little bit more. But I promise, and I know him too, we were in no way being like flirtatious or trying to, you know, actually slide into the DMs because I live, I was living in Australia at the time. He was living in America. There was no way we were planning to blossom a relationship out of this Instagram messaging. So, um, but yeah, we talked. For around three months after that I started developing feelings for him and vice versa and by Christmas I guess we both told each other we liked each other and since March was my birthday and I was turning 21 I wanted to do something different because everyone in Australia and New Zealand has like a 21st but I guess I don't want to do that so there was an inkling in me that I wanted him to come to Hong Kong with me and I was talking to a friend at one of at an event and I was like oh she was like you know you should just go to Hong Kong and I was like oh I wouldn't mind that and I was like oh should I ask him if he wants to come that night I was like oh because we were talking every day by the way and then I was like hey so I'm planning to go to Hong Kong for my birthday we should meet up there and he was like oh yeah let's let's actually let me see my calendar and I'll see if we can do it because we've always talked about how we wanted to go to Asian countries and how we love Asian countries and so long story short we met there for one week I didn't tell my parents but my parents technically they knew and they were trying to get me to admit it but I didn't and I didn't think they knew but they knew and I'm surprised they let me go but yeah we we met up in Hong Kong for one week it was honestly like married at first sight and then we celebrated my birthday in Hong Kong together so I arrived there um, let's say on a Sunday and he came on a Monday that Sunday I was so scared I was calling all my friends and I was like wait, what if I don't like him? Like, what if we're not compatible? We're staying in a hotel for a week together. Like, this is crazy. And I was freaking out. But he came that night. I remember we stole like Korean food that night. It was the bookie. 
and then that week was it was magical no I'm kidding it was really fun though we uh, went to Ocean Park spontaneously just ate a lot of food I was surprised that I like vlogged um, I don't know if you guys saw those vlogs but I actually vlogged the whole experience the whole week we were together we just had a lot of fun and it was really nice just to get to know him and travel with him at the same time thinking back on it now it's crazy. I don't understand why or how we both decided to do it considering we'd never met in person. Um, but it just worked and the goodbye was really sad because we didn't know when we were gonna see each other next. But then one month later, one of my I was meeting up with one of my housemates and she was telling me about this visa that you can have if you graduated within the year. And since I had just graduated and I was kind of in between places, I had a job, but at the same time I was up for the experience he still hadn't asked me out by then we weren't we weren't in a relationship by the time I moved to Seattle but we decided that it might work so I got the visa and then three months later I moved to Seattle for one year and that is how we met and then he asked me out one month later whilst I was in Seattle but yeah that is that is how we met via Instagram I got another question saying is New Zealand still in isolation we are no longer in lockdown but there are still regulations on how many people can be gathered uh, in one place at a time but yes, if you come into New Zealand, you do have to stay in quarantine, which is where I'm at, obviously, if you've watched my quarantine video diaries. Uh, one of my other friends just said, just how excited are you to see your fabulous best friends again? I'm very excited. Obviously, I will not be seeing one of my best friends, Tony, but I am very excited to see all my other best friends that we've been friends for 11 years. So I'm very excited to see all of them. What work did you do in the USA? I always thought it was impossible to get a job there. Uh, I really lucked out and managed to get a job at a gymnastics company. They were teaching little children how to do gymnastics. So I was a special events manager there as well as a coach. And it was so much fun because I've never worked with little kids before. So that was quite an experience. It's not hard to get a job if you're looking just like for part times or you know things like that because I think there's a lot more opportunities in America but if you're actually looking for a full time job I cannot say myself whether it was easy or not it, it did take me a solid four or five months though so I guess in that sense it was hard but I know a lot of people that take a lot longer to find a job so I can't say whether it's easy or hard I can just say that I think it just depends on what kind of job you're looking for but let's have a dumpling I talked a lot what are you most excited for about living back in New Zealand? My car. I love my family, but I'm also very excited to just be able to drive again because in Melbourne I was using a lot of public transport. And then in Seattle I was, since it's not really like a walkable city, I was also relying on the public transport. I'm very excited to be reunited with my car. Favorite things about the US versus New Zealand? What differences did you notice? Um, so I guess I'll do what differences I noticed between the US and New Zealand and then I'll say which ones were my favorite. One of the biggest differences between America and New Zealand is probably the people. Since coming back here, I've forgotten how nice the people are. Now I'm not saying that Americans are not nice, that is absolutely not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that the people in New Zealand are super friendly. I think we are the friendliest city in the world, I believe. That is a fact, I don't know if it's still relevant to this day. But in, in America, not that people weren't like that, but they were friendly in the sense that they were just doing it because, you know, it's a social politeness to do so. And there was something, especially in Seattle, it's called the Seattle Freeze. I am not too sure what this is, but my interpretation of Seattle Freeze is that people don't really care about your life unless you're like a friend. Like if you're just in a cafe, they wouldn't necessarily just um, approach you and just be like, oh, hi, I like your jumper or something like that. Like they like to keep to themselves. But whereas in New Zealand, if you see someone that has a nice jumper, you're on a bus or something, an old lady just starts talking to you, it's like very normal. <laughs> It's very normal to just be very talkative like that. And then one of the other main differences I noticed, and I'm mainly talking about Seattle since that's where I lived, is the food variations is in 
insane. The, I'm talking about cuisines, but within the cuisines, there's so many variations that I never ever knew about. And I just, coming back home, I realized how limited we are with food variations, even things like poke. I wouldn't necessarily say we have a lot of poke in New Zealand or Asian food, um, Thai food. I've only ever known like pad thai. I didn't know there was like South Thai food, North Thai food. I'm sure it's not a secret. Everyone, everyone knows that in America there's just the food variations is insane. But yes, I think the food is definitely my favorite. If you have been following my food adventures back in America, then you will know we explored a lot of food, especially Whole Foods and Trey Joe's and H Mart. Oh my gosh. <gasps> The hot food selection at all the supermarkets is insane. Whole Foods had like seven different tables filled with different um, hot foods. At H Mart, they have all the sushi and like fried chicken and like sausages and ready to go meals. Oh, insane. Let's have another dumpling. And these dumplings are very interesting. You eat into it and there's like air that like puffs out. I think there's not a lot of filling. And so when you eat into it, there's just a lot of air inside. Uh, okay, next question. What foods did you miss the most when you were living in the USA? I missed shapes. My mom actually sent me two boxes and I got Tony to try them and he loved them. If you don't know what shapes are, they're basically just crackers, flavored crackers. There's pizza, chicken, barbecue, cheddar. It sounds like they're just crackers, but no, these are like the best. They're baked, not fried, and the packaging is super exciting. And they're just like the perfect little size that you could just snack on a whole box at once, which I have done and I'm not ashamed of it. And Fijoas. If you don't know what that is, it's a, I believe it's a New Zealand fruit. I had a Fijoa tree um, in the house that I grew up in. It looks similar to kiwi fruit, but I genuinely cannot explain what the taste is like. You kind of just have to try it. So if you come to New Zealand, please try a Fijoa fruit. Make sure it's in season though. It's not always in season, but when it is, it's why did you move to America? As I told you before, it was mainly because of Tony. One of my friends says, when are you coming to visit me again? Lizzie, you live in Australia. I love you, I'll come visit you, but I'll do it when a little bit calmer and I'm allowed to come into Victoria. <laughs> the last question is, how are you planning on making your long distance relationship work? <sighs> Big question. Before we do that, I feel like it's time for another dumpling. Uh, so to be honest, this is my first relationship and so it's very interesting to know that the only relationship I've ever known is a long distance but I think with Tony and I were really fortunate that we started our relationship long distance. We met when we were living in different countries. We met in a different country in Hong Kong and so I guess we we're planning to make it work with a lot of communication. Uh, it sounds very cheesy, everyone's always like, oh, the most important thing in a relationship is communication, and I 100% agree, and especially if you're doing a long distance, because if you try to play games, or you know, you try to make the other person miss you more by not replying, the other person may not know what you want and they can't know because they, they don't, they're not going to see you for a long time. So you must be transparent. It takes a lot of patience and um, commitment to talking to each other. Making sure that you're very understanding of what the other person's going through. Well, let's just say that I text him, you know, and I miss him and then he doesn't reply and I say, oh, how dare he not reply just because he's with his friends. I have to remember that he is also living his life. There's a sense of individualism when it comes to long distance. A lot of what we're doing, our day, our plans do not involve the other person. And so we have to be very understanding. We have to be very accommodating to what the other person is doing during that day because it doesn't involve us. It's definitely hard to think of it that way, especially because we lived with each other for one, for one year and all our plans involved each other. No matter what we did, we did it together. So it's very difficult to adjusting to the new mindset that everything that I do is 
just me um, if I'm meeting up with friends if I'm going for a walk it's not with him I'm doing it by myself there is no rule of thumb every relationship is different but I know that with me I'm going to be very transparent if I'm feeling sad if I'm feeling angry I'm going to tell him on the spot I'm not gonna leave it till last minute like the end of the day or a few days later and the end of the week when we're in the middle of watching a movie um, I will tell him then and there because only that way will he know straight away how I'm feeling and if I'm feeling angry at the end of the day he is not like oh what, what's happening he, he knows you know he knows exactly how I'm feeling and vice versa and at the same time it's a matter of putting a lot of thought and creativity <laughs> into the relationship um, if we're doing a movie night if we're doing a picnic day especially because of the time difference it's a 17 hour time difference I believe the main things with long distance relationship especially with Tony and I is probably creativity with how we spend time with each other transparency um, of how we're feeling not playing games and third and most importantly communication all the time and then a lot of my other questions was basically like what it was like living in America um, and then flying to New Zealand. Those two are very big topics that I feel like this Q&A is just too long for. So I'm thinking about when I either get out of quarantine or another time, um, I'll do another video on those two subjects. Those are kind of the main few questions uh, that you guys asked and I, I loved to answer. So that's that. Yeah, to end the video, let's have one more dumpling. I'm going to log off now. I'm going to continue eating my dumplings. I'm going to call Tony, as you can tell, communication, <laughs> and enjoy the rest of my lunch with him. Yeah, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like. It really helps to like spread my video out and subscribe. And if you have a YouTube channel, tell me below. Um, I would love to meet more video YouTubers, so I would love to subscribe and support you. Um, and I'll see you in my video diary tomorrow. Bye.